It's Wednesday night. Aren't you supposed to be up here? Oh, okay. How's everyone doing? You doing well? Yes, everybody. Good. Couple of quick things for you. Let you know. Next week, next Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, same bat time, same bat channel, we will have Reza Safa here. Reza Safa. So he will be here next week. So you'll want to be here for that. It's going to be good. I also want to uh, welcome any first-time guests that we have tonight. Thanks for coming. You picked a good church to come to, I think. We have a lot of good churches in this town. And uh, you could have gone other places. I mean, there's not many churches that have a, a Wednesday night service. But we do. You came. Thanks for being here. Yeah. No, at the, at the close of our service, we'll have uh, someone, a couple, standing beside the American flag who will be there to greet you. Oh, it's you guys. Okay, good. A very hospitable couple, and they're bilingual. And did you bring any salsa or anything with you, or no? Oh, you just get water. But uh, we've got a really nice couple who would like to greet you, welcome you, and uh, take you back to our hospitality room. We have some gifts for you, refreshments, not salsa. And uh, just want to uh, thank you so much for coming. I want to tell you all before you get up and run towards the exits, Pastor Grant is not here tonight. I'm watching you. You get up and run, Dave. Uh, so I'm preaching. Uh, so hope you stick around for that. See, Wes is already like, that's it. We're out of here. I know. <laughs> No, so Pastor and Susan are, uh, they're flying out tomorrow to Phoenix, so they're just uh, preparing and getting ready to leave town and all the last minute stuff and resting up, so that's where they're at. All right, stand up, greet some people around you, we'll get right to praise and worship.
So we'll sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. We'll sing a little louder. We will sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. We will sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. We'll sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Oh, louder than the enemies. We'll sing a little louder. such an awesome God. Oh, we praise your name. We worship you. Oh, you're so holy, God. You're so marvelous, God. You're so miraculous. Just take 30 seconds and just thank him for the day. Lord, I just thank you so much for this day. You are so awesome. You kept us safe. You kept us healthy. You kept us well. You brought us to church. We get to come. We get to just worship you. Lord, I just thank you. We magnify your name tonight, God. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven, the King of kings calls me his own, beautiful sin. Yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. 
Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. And out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Sing that with me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. And out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when Jesse asked me to pray him in tonight, because he's preaching, and uh, he's not sure you want to see him praise and pray and preach. That's not true, though. We all want him to see him do all those things. But so I started praying like I always do. Holy Spirit, show me what to share. And um, still hadn't had anything, but, you know, sometimes he comes at the last second, and it's still on time for him. So when I heard them singing the song to raise a hallelujah, he reminded me of a story or something that I lived through when I had COVID, and I was sick. I was so sick. And I had been sick for a good two weeks, like laying in bed sick. And finally, I was like, what are you doing? Get up out of your bed, turn on some praise music, and start praising him. And you know, I did, and for hours I praised him. And the next morning I woke up, and I'm telling you what, I was better and there, there's so much power in, in praise and worship, and that's why I love the praise and worship team. Um, so many times, he also reminded me of, I've been waiting for an answer, praying and waiting for an answer, and I come into the sanctuary. It doesn't have to be in the sanctuary, but that's just seemed what happened with me. I come into the sanctuary, and I'm praising and worship, and there it is. There's my answer, and I know exactly what to do. So there is power in praise and worship. So thank you, team. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you that we have such an awesome praise team. Some that are here and some that are not at the moment, but thank you for Jesse, Father God. We know that you call us and lead us and guide us into new positions, and we know that Jesse is one of those. We will miss him, but we also know you are faithful. You are putting people where they need to be. Jesse is going where he needs to be. He's not leaving the church, Father, I know, but he's, he's going into a position that you've called him into, and you will bring someone to, to act and do what he's doing in a different way, but in your way. So we just thank you ahead of time, Father, for that appointed person that will be here. And I just thank you, Lord, that you reach us any way that you can get to us, whether it's reading our word, whether it's praising you or singing songs. You want to hear from us. You want to answer us because you are a faithful God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Can you hear me? No? Is it on? There we go. Okay. All right, let me clarify. These, there are these gigantic flies that came in. I killed one on my piano last night in the middle of rehearsal. All right, so let me clarify what Renee just said. For those of you, you don't start my timer yet. Okay? So, let me clarify. I am not going 
anywhere, okay? Let me just clarify that right now, because Renee started saying, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to fix this. So, let me just, I'll, I'll give you the quick synopsis. This isn't any big secret. Most people know, or at least we assumed they did, and Pastor talked about it uh, at second service Sunday. So, let's go back to uh, January of 2020. Um, we were here, we were doing a pastor's conference. Pastor Bob Yandian was on this stage ministering, and I was seated in the back, and as he was ministering, <clears throat> the Lord just gave me a download, and I was like, man, this is really weird. And so that night I was sitting there talking with Eddie, you know, Eddie Ponytail, Eddie, our youth director, Eddie. And I said, Eddie, I, I, I believe that, that the Lord told me I was going to move into uh, pastoral care. And I don't know what that means. Pastor Steve, you know, McGraw was here at the time. And I said, he's going to be here till he dies. He's not going anywhere. I don't know what this means, but, you know, just kind of, you know, file it in the back of your head, move on with life. So I did not know, but I had told this to Susan. So then when a few of us found out on staff that Pastor Steve was leaving before it was public, um, Susan said, uh, I, told, I told Grant to talk to you that you'd be interested in this. Okay. So we talked, and I knew that this, you know, this is the direction that I feel God's calling me. And uh, so we started those conversations in April of last year. And in May, um, pastor said, you know, what we'll do is we're going to give you time to really decide if you want to do pastoral care. If you back out and say, I don't want to do this, and I will continue doing music, no harm, no foul, if you decide, you know, that you, you do want to go on pastoral care, we'll start looking for a new worship leader. <clears throat> okay, so I, uh, I met with the board, and their first question to me is, why? So I went through all of that with them, <clears throat> and I said, oh, it's no problem. I, I'm willing to do both jobs, pastoral care and worship, till we get someone... I'm not going to just say, I'm out, I'm only doing this now. <clears throat> and they said, well, how long do you expect this will last? And I said, oh, I'm good for at least till Christmas. <clears throat> and now Easter is in about two weeks. But uh, so what the church has done, Pastor announced uh, Sunday, is we have, uh, for lack of better words, we have retained a headhunter who this guy's sole job is he's hired by churches to, to fill positions and ministries because it is not easy to fill this job that I've had. Um, I'm not trying to blow smoke for myself. I'm just saying it's difficult for, for a couple reasons. One, Naples is a very different place. It's not middle of nowhere Minnesota, right? <laughs> Two, we want to also find the right person that fits this. It's not a cookie cutter position where you can just get a worship guy off a shelf. You know, oh, you play guitar, piano, great. And you, you know, you just shove anyone in here. So it, it's a process we're going through. So pastor announced Sunday that uh, our headhunter who we, we've hired to help with this process will be here um, in two weeks, and then we'll start bringing candidates in uh, for that process. So that's, that's what's happening. I am not going anywhere. I have no plans of ever going anywhere. Um, so just settling that right now. <clears throat> I just want to make that very, very clear. Because, you know, I, we have known for almost a year now this was happening, and uh, it's been funny because there have been people who have said to me over the last year, I don't want you to leave. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not leaving. Um, I'm, I own a home here. I grew up in this church. You know, it, I'm not going anywhere. So anyway, that's what's happening. I'm preaching tonight because if you came in late and missed it, um, 
That's okay. We are a grace church. But uh, Pastor and Susan are leaving for Phoenix tomorrow. He is ministering, actually they both are ministering um, at an army conference in Phoenix, Arizona this weekend. And so they were preparing. So I had already planned on, I, I will be ministering Sunday. Uh, Wes, I hope you come out Sunday. So, but I'll be here Sunday ministering. I already planned on that. And then uh, Pastor Grant asked me Sunday night after service, can you do Wednesday night? And I said, sure. So, Yvette, now you can start my countdown. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you know, a couple weeks ago, I, I ministered on the, you know, the types of soil, the parable of the, the, the heart with the types of soil, and then I kind of went into uh, the fruit of the Spirit, right? And I talked about love and how love essentially encompasses all of the fruit of the Spirit. And then I talked about peace, so I decided I'm going to kind of continue with that tonight. I don't think I will on Sunday, but tonight I'm going to talk about joy. Let me tell you, this has been a very trying day for me, knowing I am teaching on joy. So I cracked my tooth, right? So I cracked my tooth. It's been bothering me. I was on a Z-Pack trying to just make sure, you know, I was thinking, it's not that bad. I think it's more just the sinus thing, the allergies, the pollen's really bad. I'll be on the Z-Pack, I'll be fine. Well, as you know, Z-Packs just like wreck your system. And then I was like, okay, so Sunday, I was actually on my way into church, stopped, got Oragel. I'm like squirting it in there in between services, trying to just get through the day, taking Tylenol, just trying to like, God, I'm speaking to my tooth, praying, God, I, 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 this, this is not going to bother me. Got through services, fine. Got a hold of the dentist. I got in this morning. I went in, and they said, you need a root canal and a crown. And I was like, okay, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And they said, good, we're going to do it today. And I was like, I have to preach tonight. And I take, when I, when I get dental work done, it takes enough Novocaine to kill a horse. <laughs> like, it's, I, I remember in high school, I had a root canal done, and I would flare my nostrils, and only one of my nostrils was flaring because they had given me so much Novocaine. So I, I told the dentist, I said, look, I have to preach tonight at 7 o'clock, and they want me to come back this afternoon to do it. And I said, I really need to have a functioning face. Oh, no, you'll be fine. It, it should wear off by 5, 5.30. I said, okay. And I'm just, so I left there, and I'm like, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Then they called me and said, you know what? The doctor was thinking about it, and he, he would prefer you come back tomorrow just to be safe. so He doesn't mess anything up for your service tonight. So I'm very appreciative of that. But it was trying today, man. That, I was just like, I'm preaching on joy. Yeah, so I will warn you right now, if you've heard me preach before, you know I use a lot of scripture. So if you want to try and follow along in your Bible, good luck, have fun, hope you don't get any uh, blisters on your fingers. Everything will be up on the screen behind me, hopefully. So in Galatians 5, we're not going there, Yvette. This is just in my notes to reference this. It describes works of the flesh, um, specifically verses 16 through 21. And it's, uh, you know, most of our problems are not the problem of the devil. You see, when God created Adam, he created Adam from dust. Then when he cursed the serpent, he said, you will feed on dust. See, it's the devil that feeds on our flesh. Our flesh is the problem most of the time, right? So we're going to discuss the fruit of joy. But first, let's recap fruit. In uh, Matthew 7, starting in verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? 
Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. So, no pressure, but I should know you by your fruit. Let me tell you, Laura is a very joyful person. She's always smiling. She's always happy. I know her by that fruit. Her husband may know her by another fruit. Maybe she's also patient. I know her by the fruit of joy. She's joyful, right? Good answer. He nodded his head. Spiritual fruit is the outcome of unbroken and full communion with Christ. If you go to John 15, verses 1 through 5, it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. You skip down to verse 8. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. See, manifesting the fruit of the Spirit both glorifies God and identifies us as Jesus' disciples. So, where does that start? That starts with that cactus person, that person that is very difficult to deal with in your life. You cannot tell me that you are walking in love with someone you like, that's easy, it starts with the people you don't like. I know you're thinking. You, you walk into work or you got that person you see at the golf course and you're thinking, man, they suck the joy out of my day. That's right. <laughs> well, that's, that's your cactus person. That's where you start. You start practicing joy. In Genesis 1, verses 27 and 28, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves, or my favorite, it says in another translation, creeps, on the earth. I love that because you have dominion over the creeps of the earth. (laughs) See, being fruitful is a prerequisite for increased success and spiritual authority to be realized in our lives. What are the fruit of the Spirit? It says in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. See, this is the description of the type of fruit we are to produce in our lives. So, let's talk about joy, shall we? Joy. Well, let's start in the book of Psalm. Let's go to Psalms 100. I told you I got a lot of scriptures. I think when I gave Claudia all my scriptures put together, I think she gave me back, I had six pages of scriptures. That was all of them like typed out though. So, all right, Psalm 100 verse, uh, starting in verse one. A Psalm of Thanksgiving, make a joyful Shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. 
It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures for all generations. Yvette, can you put verse 2 back up there, please? It says, serve the Lord with gladness. That is not a suggestion. It is a command. See, with every command comes the grace or the ability to perform what you have been told to do. With every command comes the ability to perform it through the Spirit living inside of you. Every day, you and I have the choice to be mad, to be sad, or to be glad. Joy is not based on circumstances, but on relationship with God. Happiness is based on what's going on around you. Joy will produce happiness, but happiness is not the goal. Joy is the goal. Happiness is like a roller coaster. How many of you know these roller coaster Christians, right? Oh my gosh, everything is so great. Wasn't that a great message today? Oh man, he didn't sing enough hymns today. And, you know, I just, you know, traffic was really bad today. And it's just, you know, I was watching, listening to, you know, the news on my way in and the world's coming to an end and I haven't stocked up on enough rice. And, and oh, but God is my strength and he gives me my joy. And isn't it so great? But you know, the price of gas is so expensive. <laughs> It's just so hard, and I just lay awake at night just wondering, you know, is our country going to hell in a handbasket, and it's so great, and then I get to Sunday, and oh, it's such a great day to be here, and oh, I'm blessed and highly favored, and oh, but you know, my grandson, he's, he's spending too much time on his device, and you know, it's just, I'm really worried about this generation, and you know, there are politicians next, and there are government leaders, and I know you know that person. It's like, it's like I, would, I would almost describe it as an Eeyore Christian. But Eeyore's always down here. He's never up here too, right? Look at it this way. Who here has kids or grandkids, right? Okay, all right. Who loves it when the kids or grandkids are joyful and they're happy? Who loves it when the kids are whiny? Does it bless you when they're whiny? Well, don't you want to bless the Lord? Don't bring him your whininess. See, guys, fellas, Jesus wants the same thing that we want, and that is a responsive bride. See, we want, and Jesus wants, a bride who wants to be with us, who's happy to be around us, who talks to us, who's walking in love. It's all what it's about. If you go to Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16, it says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You and I are called to be the salt and light to the world around us. You are the light now. You see in Proverbs 13, verse 9, it says, The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out. 
I almost titled that my message tonight, The Light of the Righteous Rejoices. So who in here is righteous? Who's the light? That's you, right? You know the song, this is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Come on, we can do it. This the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. Right? Okay. You didn't know this was participation. Are you being a light? Are you hiding it under a bushel? Are you letting Satan blow it out? Or are you just a, a dim Christian in a dark society? You know, Pastor Grant said it, I don't know, a week or so ago, that, you know, if, if you want to quit your job because, man, I can't work there. There's a bunch of drug addicts and a bunch of Satanists, and there's not a Christian in there. I got to get out of there. Well, hello. Maybe you were sent there to be the light. In Joel, uh, chapter 1, verse 12, the vine has dried up and the fig tree has withered. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree. All the trees of the field are withered. Surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. See, the trees are people. The world is withered. See, the joy is withered. Our joy or lack of it will impact the world around us. You go to Deuteronomy 28, verses 47 and 48. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart, for the abundance of everything. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in need of everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. See, that's God saying, you have joy inside of you, but if you let happiness and the world rule and control you, that's what's going to happen. You're going to let the world steal your lunch money. See, hunger, thirst, poverty, lack, and bondage are just a few of these enemies. Serving the Lord with joy and gladness is a much better way to serve. See, in Matthew 5, verse 12, it says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You know, it says in, uh, I believe it is in King James, it says to leap for joy. For, to leap for joy. How many of you are leap? You didn't think I could jump that high. <laughs> this is reinforced. We could park a truck up here, okay? How many of you are leaping, or how many of you are just? In order for you to leap, your feet have to leave the ground. You have to leap. For gladness. Are you leaping for joy? Or are you just rocking in it? That's a swaying with joy. So, I gotta pull my pants up after that. <laughs> How do we cultivate joy in our life? Well, I've got some ways for you. First, salvation. You see, Psalm 51.12 says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. See, all real joy has its joy in knowing the Lord. 
If you get down, you're feeling blue. Or it's just one of those days where everything's coming against you. You just got to remind the devil of his future. He's a loser. He loses in the end. So why are you fretting now? You know, I, I got friends who uh, were telling me, Jesse, the end of civilization is coming. And they, they even went to my wife. Jesse is not concerned enough. We're telling him, you guys need to be stocking up on rice and flour under the new world order. Cash will no longer be the currency. It's going to be bullets and cigarettes. That's what you need to be stocking up on. Hide it under your pillows and your mattresses. I know this. I saw it from a guy online. It's real. This is happening. I'd be like, look, y'all. God hasn't forsaken us so far. He's not going to start tomorrow. He still has the recipe for manna. If you have the relationship with God, you won't lose your joy. If you have a relationship with God and not with CNN, the banking system, the real estate market, See, that's, that's, that's the fruit that you're showing, right? Oh my gosh, the world's going to end. Oh my gosh, we got to hunker down. An indictment's coming. Man, it doesn't matter what the outcome is. Jesus is still on the throne. I'm still, I still got my joy. No politician gave me my joy, therefore no politician can take my joy. I don't enjoy the price of gas where it's at right now, but it's been high before, and we've recovered. I don't put my joy in the price of gas. All right, moving on. Philippians 2, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. You see, the most miserable people on earth are the Christians who are not living in fellowship with the living God. Those living in that state will pursue occasions of happiness that are fleeting and leaving themselves empty and frustrated. If you're not saved and you're worrying about your problems, your problems are not going to be of concern once you're in hell. You know, I, I, uh, there's a story that Andrew Womack tells about this woman who her... her Marriage was falling apart. And, and she, she met him at some event. She said, Andrew, I really need you to pray for me and my husband. Our marriage is just in shambles. And he said, well, are you saved? She says, nope, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about my marriage. He said, you ain't going to care about your marriage in hell. You spend five minutes there, you ain't going to care what your marriage is like on earth. Don't you, don't you want to get saved and have, spend eternity in heaven? That's what it's about. Get saved and enjoy the joy of salvation and fellowship with Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, So then death is working in us, but life in you. All right, next. The prayer factor. Isaiah 56.7 says, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. 
Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Let's jump to uh, Psalm 1611, Yvette. It says, you will show me the path of life, and your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. See, spending time in his presence in prayer is a great source of joy. He shows the path of life, wisdom, and direction for your life there. Pleasures forevermore are there. Peace, not torment or confusion. If you're praying, you'll get blessed, touched, affirmed, and healed there. Prayer moves you into the expectancy that produces joy. John 16, 24 says, Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. The next thing that cultivates joy is the word factor. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Your words were found and I ate them. Your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Psalm 19, 8 says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. See, revelation of the word brings joy and comfort to my heart. It ministers confidence and assurance of his faithfulness to me. One word from God will heal your body, save your marriage, deliver your children, birth or revive your business ministry, and will transform your life. The sound of people praying and reading the word scares the enemy because when God's people are on their way to the promise, the enemy is doomed. Isaiah 55, 11, and 12 says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. I shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The trees of the field, which are the people of the world, shall clap their hands. See, the world is impacted by my joy and peace. You got that? If you walk into a room with a bunch of Eeyores and you got that joy, they are either going to join you or you have the opportunity you can join them. What, what are you going to choose? Because I can, I can assure you if you continue to show them you got joy and peace, they will join you. Unless you jump on that bandwagon with them. Man, I'm so great. I got the joy of the Lord. Oh, well, we just found out our rent is going up. and Found out my homeowner's insurance is going up. and Oh, that is so depressing. You're right. So you've joined them. You are now one with the world at that point. The next factor is the giving factor. See, in Acts 20, uh, verse 35, it says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak 
And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. See, there is great joy in giving and being able to be a blessing to another person. Um, you know, uh, so uh, one of my Karis Bible college, I'm, I'm a third year Karis Bible college student. One of my classes I was doing one summer um, and my daughter was in my office, I was listening to the class and Greg Moore was teaching and he was on a, a prosperity and he just kept saying, you know, you want to be blessed to be a blessing, okay? And that was my daughter, that's all she heard all day was in this lesson. Because what he was teaching is, I'm going to like shorten this message up real quick for you with this. When you're in a situation, you want to be blessed. Because a blessing, it lasts. A miracle is really like an emergency thing. Does that make sense? So when Greg Moore was here a month or so ago, Greg, uh, my daughter, Kaylee, I introduced him, and, and she said, you know, I remember hearing you just keep saying, I am blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed. That's, that's all, that's all she, she took away, right? So at the end of the night, he, you know, we, we were having dinner, and he, he reached into his pocket and handed her a $20 bill and said, there you go. And then looked, oh, nope, and took it out of her hand. And I don't know if you've ever taken cash from a 13-year-old. But she was all excited when she got that 20, and it sunk. Like he reached in, says, no, that wasn't the right one, and handed her a $100 bill. Because he has been blessed to be a blessing. And so I, I was telling Pastor Grant about it, and he said, oh, that's Greg's thing. Is Greg, Greg loves to have $100 bills to just bless people with. If, he, if anyone ever says, is there anything I can get you? He always responds with, stack of hundreds. Because he wants to be blessed to bless others. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. I'm off that tangent. 2 Corinthians 8, 5 says, And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. See, it gives the Lord great joy and pleasure when you give yourself to him and to others on his behalf. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. See, joy is the barometer God has given us to direct our giving. That's why pastor says, don't put your unhappy money in the offering box. It's right here. Next is the harvest factor. In Luke 15, 10, it says, Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. See, Jesus taught us to pray on earth as it is in heaven. But what is it that gives God heaven and earth great joy? The reconciliation of men and women, boys and girls to God. In Psalms 126, verses 5 and 6, it says, Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bring his sheaves with him. See, you reach out and you touch someone with the love of Jesus and the message of the gospel. There is great joy in being involved in the harvest. Whether you lead someone to the Lord or help a prodigal come back to the father's house. 
Isaiah 12, 3 says, Therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. What wells are you drawing from? This thing right here will lead you down the path of unhappiness, frustration, your fleshly desires. Or you can go down the path of salvation, prayer, giving, and harvest to bring you to joy. See, the well that you draw from will determine the measure of joy that will manifest through your life. Depression, discouragement, or oppression is the result of drawing from the wrong well in your life. You have to determine to draw from the right well, and you will give others good fruit from your tree on a consistent basis. You want to be that person that has the joy of the Lord all over you. No matter what the circumstance is, you can choose to be mad, sad, or glad. Don't be that guy that no one wants to be with. You know it. You know that person. If you've ever worked, been in school, been around people, there's always that person that when you see them, you're like, oh, dear Lord, I hope they do not ask me for a ride because I don't want to be stuck in a conversation with them. I don't want to have to go from here to 7-Eleven with them because they will just drain me. And if you can't think of that person, you're probably it. So, you get to manifest joy. You get to leap with joy. You get to be the joy that others need. You get to bring that. You get to be the light. Do not let Satan blow it out. Don't hide it. Be that light for all to see. You know, there, there's, there's always, be, be that person that, you know, you don't have to talk to people. Maybe you're, you're an introvert. You're like, you know what? I don't like talking to people. That's my wife. My wife would rather eat a shoe than have to have a conversation with strangers. But you can smile at them. You can just be nice. There are ways to show the joy of the Lord non-verbally. There are ways you can show very angry things non-verbally. Drive around Naples for about 20 minutes. You know... There's a guy here, his name is Miguel, young guy in the back. He's got the biggest smile. He is always smiling. He's always happy. Because he's got joy. He'll also tell you he's very humble and proud of it, but that's another discussion for another day. <laughs> but I love you anyways, Miguel. Thank you. He just blew me a kiss. So, you have the option to be a Miguel in a world of Eeyores. That's all you got to do. You don't got to talk to them. Just smile. Just be happy. Maybe, maybe you need to go home and stare at yourself in the mirror for a while and smile. Look, we, we um, have recorded radio ads, right? Like for the holidays, be a thing, play on Way FM, you know. This is Pastor Grant Thigpen. I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, right? 
they tell you when you go into the recording booth to smile. You don't see him. It's radio. But it comes out. Why? Because that joy just comes across. Try it. When you, when you get in your car, look in the mirror and smile. When you need to have a conversation, smile while you're talking to them. It's that easy. It's that easy. You have a job this week. You are to go out and to be the light, to show joy, not destruction. To be joy, not one with the world. To be the light separated from the darkness. And if you can, leap with joy. If you got the knees to do it, I encourage you to do it. Don't do it, Vicky. Her foot's in a cast. The rest of y'all can. Jump. Leap with joy. There is, I'm telling you, people are going to be like, there's something about that person. I don't know what it is. Let it be that joy. Stand with me, please. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I thank you that we get to leap with gladness and that we get to be a light in this dark world for you. We get to separate ourselves from the world and to bear the fruit and manifest Jesus. Pray that everyone has a safe trip home tonight, gets lots of rest. I pray for Pastor Grant and Susan that they have a safe trip to Phoenix. I pray for Pastor and the message that he has prepared to minister this weekend out there. I pray that they come back rested, healthy, and well. And I just thank you so much that we have such an awesome pastor. I also pray a blessing over the tithes and offering. I thank you that we have joyful givers, not grumpy givers. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Offering boxes are by the doors. I love you all. We have Drew and Gabby over here by the flag. They'd love to take all our first-time guests to the back for uh, some gifts, not salsa. And uh, I love you all. Have a good night. I'll see you all on Sunday. You're dismissed. <laughs>